All right. Thank you everyone for joining for today is a uh, session number 13, mock interviews uh, with the hiring managers. Today's session will be for QA automation positions. And we have two managers and uh, we have two candidates. So let me uh, share a screen and I will give brief introduction uh, what you should expect if you are the first time here, all right? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to for today's managers. Uh, Jeff Singh, he's a senior software QA manager at Iterable, and Adil Mansour, uh, he's a QA manager at Chow Now. Both managers, both guys, Jeff and Adil, they they were here previously, and it's not their first time. Thank you for doing this, uh, guys. And um, Quick disclaimer though, uh, so it is an educational event. It's not a job opportunity and all managers, they represent only themselves, not the companies. So uh, just to have the right understanding, okay? And if you first time guys here, so how it works. So all participants, I mean, all candidates uh, who signed up, for today's session, they will be anonymously today. And they should uh, uh, prepare just only two questions. Tell me about yourself and what was your last project, what you did there. Uh, both um, questions will be limited for four minutes. I will be putting the timer and I will be tracking the, uh, the time. So, and after that, uh, Adil and Jeff, they will be asking follow-up questions. Uh, whatever they do in their, you know, like what they do uh, as a QA managers, right? And then after that, we'll give a brief feedback to candidates, uh, what went well and what they should improve. And in the end, uh, after all candidates will be done, I want to uh, recap with uh, Adil and Jeff and just to go through um, the performance of our candidates. Let's say they went through and would you uh, go with them for the next step? Would you invite them for the uh, final interview or maybe for the second step in your hiring process? If not, why? All right. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please you can ask them in a Q&A section or in the chat. Um, yeah, and please join to our Slack channel. Uh, Ira, if you could, could you please uh, post it in the, our chat, the Slack uh, link. And I think, let me stop sharing the screen. And we have candidate number one. Candidate number one, are you, are you ready for today's session? Yes, good morning, I'm ready. Awesome, great. So. Candidate number one, please tell us a little bit about yourself and about your last project. Well, um, as you can see from my resume, my name is candidate number one, and I'm an experienced software QA engineer with a master's degree in automation of technological processes. And after my graduation in 2009, worked in two different banks as a systems engineer for three years, where I received a lot of experience in software, hardware, networking, and IT industry as well. <clears throat> then later worked in a civil aviation company as a hardware QA engineer for two years where I got uh, first class experience working with aircraft internal hardware equipment quality. And the last seven years as a software QA engineer in two beautiful companies where I got fabulous experience of working with the front end and the back end of the web applications, the mobile applications, as well as colossal experience in the UA automation using the WebDriver IO framework for Node.js. And that's what brings me here today and why I'm excited to learn more about this opportunity. And so uh, about my last project, my most recent project that I worked on, it was a web application built on the React.js and the Node.js and also utilized an architecture of 75 microservices. It is the largest and the most powerful the B2B and B2C online booking marketplace in the world available as web and the mobile application for the clients and the businesses. 
So uh, in purpose to keep the company and the project name confidentiality on that mock interview, I will replace the real project name with the ABC name. So the idea of the, the booking engine marketplace from the customer perspective is to allow user to book um, ABC product and then later use it on scheduled time. And from the business perspective, it is to allow customer to search for the ABC product, book it, and then later provide the ABC product to the customer on scheduled time, as well as subscription plans, social networks, and e-commerce. So I helped the company to reduce the regression cycle by 90% by implementing stable web driver IO UI automation framework, providing as much as possible positive and the negative scenarios tested covered by 2,800 automated test cases. Uh, the huge amount of product defects were caught by automated scripts and fixed in staging environment, which prevented the leakage uh, of the def defects to the, into the production. And we use Jenkins to run our test nightly. And after each build in our cross-browser testing Selenium grid with the report portal integration for test analytics. We also integrated the Slack bot for ability to run any test on fly from your smartphone while you're standing in line at the supermarket, for example, and get a detailed report directly to your smartphone. And during the last year, I supervised the offshore QA automation team of 11 people and was awarded with going the extra mile gem gemstone. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Great, thanks. Uh, Adil, do you want to start? Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Um, you know, it's, it's always, <laughs> So even even though it is a mock interview, it's still a I'm sure it's uh, still a bit nerve nerve wracking to go first. So I I appreciate you uh, sharing sharing that. Um, I had a just a you know a first first question would be um, what did you you know since in your resume you have called out uh, in your most recent position that you've you've done automation and REST API testing. What kind, you know, what would you say uh, in the past year? What what is your breakdown of automation uh, around UI versus backend? So uh, for the past year, uh, I would say uh, ninety percent of the UI and ten percent of the backend, because we automated the backend like uh, a couple of years ago, and we got the coverage for almost 100% of the product and all net source services. So that's why we spent like the last year for the for the UI. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, Jeff, you wanna you wanna go? You wanna yeah. go? So candidate, quick question. So you mentioned that your stack's on a microservice. Um, sure. I'm assuming that your front end's on one service and then you have some back end components. Walk me through how you do testing if only one um, one service has been deployed and the other one. How do you check to make sure that there's no like discrepancy between you know services? Like you you know, as you flip one over, the other ones downstream haven't been affected. Sure. So um, this project, as I said, that's the booking engine, and the services are pretty are pretty sensitive to each other. But for example, if you're deployed the service. Um, for the promotional codes, and you did not deploy the service for the social network, you are still able to, to test the, the promotional codes without the testing the, uh, the social network. Um, so I would say you can still run the tests. Like, as I said, you can, you can run it from Slack and uh, you can independently select and check which tests you would like to run. So um, yeah, you can just like skip the tests if the services what don't need to be tested if they are not deployed. But the most of the time uh, we do test on our staging environment. And like uh, I would say 99% of the time, the all 75 microservices were deployed correctly. And if there is any issues like uh, the DevOps engineers will fix it like right away. So in a scenario where you're working on one service and mm -hmm. you don't want to have to spin up 
the other services downstream or upstream that are either providing or contracting to you, what strategy could you use to right, test your automation? Can you please uh, explain the question? I'm not sure that I got it. Sorry, so let's say you're, you're in charge of testing a service, right? And you, you're, maybe your service has, you know, it's relying on some backend service mm -hmm. to, you know, your social networking, you, your, your front end allows you to, you know, um, pull data, right? But you don't want to rely on the backend service. It's not ready, but your front end service is ready, right? What, what could you do to your automation to not have to rely on the backend service? Sure. Uh, you can do like a validation of the UI. Like you can make sure that the uh, that strings is the strings, the numbers it's the numbers, and you can uh, make sure that the everything what you expect to be represented on the screen is currently represented without the validation. Let's let's say for example, you are driving the customer from from the very first page when they land on the booking engine till to the uh, the very end at the checkout. And mm -hmm. for example, if some services were not deployed, you don't need to validate, uh, let's say the final total price if they were not deployed. So if like, if it was just deployed on the front end, uh, you can make sure that everything is aligned and that's the price, for example, the price what was on the first page, the same price is still represented on the last page. And also if you do, for example, in our project, mm -hmm. um, so for example, the, the promotional codes, uh, we do all math, um, in browser, so we do not send any request to the server when you apply the promo code. Okay. And so for example, if you apply the promo code on the very first page and you got the price, first you can do, you can verify that the price is displayed correctly. For example, you got the 50% off, you, you need to do math on your on your automation and make sure that it is a 50%. Then you can, uh, if it is a Canadian dollars or for example, Australian dollars, you need to make sure that the, the currency symbol is displayed correctly still. Not, uh, for example, there is a common issue when you apply the promo code and instead of Canadian dollars, you, you got the not a number. So you need to make sure that it is a still Canadian dollar, but not, not a number. And then when you going down to the checkout page, you need to be, you need to be make sure that the same price is still representing what was given you on the first page. And then uh, on your final page, which is the confirmation page, you need to be make sure that customer paid exactly the same amount on the UI. You don't need to verify it on the backends if the, the services were not deployed. Uh, but yeah, that's what you can do. So did you, when you're writing your automation, did you implement any of this mocking that you kind of mentioned? Like what, what is the uh, orchestration to, to get, get your front end, like say Selenium to, when you hit a backend you know, endpoint to get a mock, to get a, you know, stub data out you you do the 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 get value from the uh from the browser so oh. like um so um if you do just like if you're talking about the ui and you are not pulling the data uh using the the api you just uh you just read read the data from the screen you do uh you declare the variable you do the get value from the uh, from the browser and you you store this value uh in the variable and then you just reuse it Okay. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I was thinking what we can do now is switch over to a little uh, diagramming. If you're up to it, uh, candidate. So um, if yep. you are, if you're ready, I think we already shared the link with you. But if you want, I can share that with you, and uh, I can give you the sort of uh, the exercise. What do you think? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, let me let me give let me let me give you the the scenario and then you can share your screen and start uh, start diagramming and feel free to ask me or uh, or Jeff any questions as you go along. Um, sure. So what we're what we're looking for uh, from you is uh, given your front end testing experience, uh, can you diagram for us uh, a test automation framework for front end testing? So and you can. You can pick any any tech stack you want. Um, we are, you know, we're interested in uh, in seeing like a uh, like an end to end solution for front end uh, test automation, and um, you know we may have some follow up questions as you as you go along. Sure, one second, please. Yeah, and while while you're doing that, just for everybody else, I think there's a lot of um, there are a lot of different sites that provide coding. You know, coding challenges, calling it coding interviews, but this is also 
I, I don't know if it's recent, Jeff, but I, I definitely know that this is more and more we we are going into uh, for automation jobs like diagrams. Um, so uh, so we're gonna hopefully help you candidate with this experience, and then other people can take advantage of it as well because this is not often covered in in all these different. Um, sort of online websites, uh, you know, uh, around diagramming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, to reflect what Adil said, um, you know, I find exercises like these way more interesting than, you know, can you code, you know, a simple snippet, right? Um, I want to be able to see, you know, if you understand your tech stack well, if you can able to apply it to a new tech stack, and then, you know, the principles that you're thinking about ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. So can you see, can you see my screen? Can you see it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so let's imagine uh, we are talking about the single page application, for example, the Gmail, whatever. Um, sure. Okay. So uh, I would say like uh, the structure will be you have your uh, your core right here. So let, let, let's say here is the uh, here is the whole page. Here is the whole application. And for example, some here you have like uh, like login, sign out, sign in button, or uh, something like this. Like for example, some here you have the menu button, and like um, some here you have like some navigation uh, buttons like about us or like. Um, FAQ or something like this. So um, when you're doing the when you're doing the, the automation of this page first, uh, you will do oops uh, first you will do uh, you will create uh, the core page object of this segment, and then you will reuse it on every other pages, and then you will create the page object models. Uh, sorry, uh, how where is it? Yes, right here. So you will you will create the page object models for uh, each element on the page. So for example, if it's uh, let, let's imagine you would like to test it um, the the front end web and the mobile version. So like even you will use the same page from the mobile phone. So uh, if it's a uh, since my project was written on React, so if it's a React. JS, then you implement the the React components IDs into the into the project, and you use the the web the page object models uh, for for every object located on the page for the desktop version, and then you switch into the mobile version, and you add the the React components ID for the mobile version, and then you use them when the page when the resolution is less than some particular resolution. So um, and your ma main point will be to keep continue using the in, in important into the every test your core page, since the core page that's the main like a, where you can land on the main page or you can log in or like log out, and then you will use the page object models of from each page on all your tests, and um, that's I believe the structure of the uh, that's the very very simple structure of the uh, single web page application. So I believe it's yeah. some. Yeah, so I, I think you're doing a really good job explaining your understanding of uh, um, sharing, you, you know, uh, you know how to automate something at a high level. But what I'm what I'm looking for is like a diagram of like those, you know, um, of that framework, those components working together, um, which is, you know, you're talking through it, but I'm not I'm not seeing it. Like, how would you? You know how would you how would you have your uh, your framework, um, uh, you know, set up? Like, what components within your automation uh, framework and code are talking to each other is probably uh, is is what I'm more interested more interested in in viewing that. Which um, is good, but um, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's. Let's imagine this is the core page, and let's imagine that uh, this is the customer creation page. 
So um, I, I will I will bring likely just sorry I will bring just a, like a two two examples here. So uh, on, on your code and your on your framework when you will use the like web driver IO <clears throat> using the mocha JavaScript.js. So how you will talk to to each component, for example, uh, it will be the so for example, uh, the customer dot creation dot, and then you use the method what you what you're um, implemented on the page object model, for example, uh, uh, the login or uh, uh, sign up or, or something like this, Let, let's say the login. So you use the method, that's the how you interact, sorry, that's the how you interact with the with, with the, this one. And let, then if you, for example, have like sign up button here, uh, and then how you will interact with this one, you, it will be the, the core dot page dot uh, sign up dot and your method, for example, click. So uh, that's how you will uh, interact with this uh, with this object. Um, I'm not sure about the, the, the like how the diagram should look. I, I never wrote the diagrams so like. Um, yeah. So what yeah. what I would what I would what I would say yeah. is when you when you start with a question like this, it's you know, when you have a diagram, diagramming exercise, we're not looking just at your diagram, right? There are other things at play. One important thing is, you know, asking questions early on before you start diagramming anything. Like confirm um, what the interviewer is is looking for. This is actually okay. this, is, this is pretty good, but this is this is a, this is a little bit lower level um, than what I was looking for. Uh, think about like from an end-to-end -end perspective, like where is your, I'm, I'm looking from a system perspective. Um, uh, this is a little bit low level. So essentially the requirements that I'm thinking about are, you know, where is your, you, you know, I'm not, and this is actually good. Like if I was looking for like, talk to me about, you know, write out the classes in your automation framework, you're, you'd, you'd actually be uh, hitting it uh, right on, you know, uh, the nail on the head. And which would okay. be which would be awesome. What I'm looking for is uh, at at a system level, you know, where is your where is your code? Where is it be, being executed? I'm looking at like oh, that that level. I got it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I I thought I totally understand the question now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it is as I said, it is a uh, it is a cloud based, and so we run our code uh, inside of the inside of the container. Uh, we use Docker and the Kubernetes. So we. So can you diagram that for me? That's what I'm looking for. Yes, and and it doesn't have to be pretty. Just put a bunch of boxes and and connect them uh, with arrows. But that's exactly what I'm uh, what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. It's, I would say like when, whenever we ask for like a system diagram, what we're looking for is draw a fake stack of a product. Um, I deal correct if I'm wrong, right? Draw a fake stack. Show me where your front end, your back end, your DB, right? What does that look like? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be real, right? But then how would you test this? Like, how would you test the front end, the back end, the integration, the pipeline to, you know, save a queue or a back end? How do you orchestrate that into pipeline, like a CSP yeah. pipeline, right? And where would your, you know, testing be? Sure. So, uh, for example, let's say here is the, it is pretty big. So let's say that's the, our um, uh, front end representation of the, of the application, then, Uh, we have the RabbitMQ, which is uh, the service man, the the the, the messenger, uh, which is queued the the requests from the uh, from the front end and they representing it into the the back end into the queue. So and here later uh, then we have uh, a tons of microservices uh, deployed each on the individual node uh, using it at all, sorry. Uh, all this is located into the uh, into the container, um, the Kubernetes, and so we use Docker and we use the Kubernetes for managing the the containers. And the right here, we have the I would say uh, we have a firewall 
and we have the the backend data which is located inside of the company uh, so we are not hosting it into the into the cloud like let's say the uh, gcp so uh we have the the backend uh database which is located right in our building and so uh and the each services what what needs to be talked to the database we will talk through uh, through the firewall um, in the uh, with the, our database located in the company, and then the all, all data we will send back into the uh, to the um, to the container when um, to, which is located in the outside of the company. So that's the like a, that's the pretty pretty simple uh, architecture of the application and how it works. I mean, the, the DevOps engineer can can answer this question more like uh, more open, but yeah. So. Yeah. So this is this is great. You gave us an uh, overview of the application. Now, you know, that that front end layer is the one that um, we want to see. We, we want that automated. What does that automation pipeline look like? And you can choose any stack, any any stack you want. What what does and again, it's not about you know, don't go down to the code, you know, code level, don't go, go down too deep, but at a high level, what does it look like? Where, where would your code be? Where would it be executing? How often would it be executing? We're looking at, you know, we're looking at that, uh, at that level. But don't clear the page actually. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'll say, um, it's good to leave that, that picture up. Can you go back? Okay. Um, nope. Um, generally, leave leave the di when you interview. I, I don't know if you have done a lot of these, but leave the diagram up because what we're going to be asking you is questions around your diagram, right? Because okay. you have a front end layer, right? But you know, as you run automation on it, right, we might ask you questions like you're interacting with another service behind your layer to drive, you know, data through the queue, right, into individual microservices, right? When you mentioned API testing, like walk us through, like how do you test that, right? How do you you know, how does your how does your front end you know interact with changes in if a different service gets swapped out? So yeah, let, just keep going. But in general, mm -hmm. keep your diagram up next time. Okay, sure, thank you. Um, so for the for the uh, your automation perspective, the or all the all our code is currently located in the GitHub service. Uh, let me let me draw it here. Uh, So let's say, uh, so we, we store our code on the GitHub and then, so we use, sorry, so we use our Selenium grid, uh, which is located in the Google Cloud platform. So uh, I would say here is the Selenium grid And then we have our Jenkins, which is, I will, I, I will put it here. And the pipeline, and for example, and the application itself, the, the, the front end is here. Uh, application. So, First, we store our code in the in the GitHub. Then we use the the Slack bot integration. Uh, I forgot to, to mention it here. Uh, let me put it. And as well, we use the report portal. So first, uh, let's say you are you are staying in line in the in the supermarket and you would like to run any kind of uh, tests right on the fly from your smartphone. You use the Slack bot. Oops, sorry. You use the, the the Slack bot integration. So you you query the Slack bot. Hey, I would like to use the, the run the test. For example, the the customer creation test uh, on the UI. So what it will do? It will send the command right to the Jenkins. Jenkins will pull the data from the GitHub from the master. 
Jenkins will build uh, the build and it will execute it right on the Selenium grid. The Selenium grid will interact with the application. The all results will send back into the Selenium grid. <clears throat> and then right from the Selenium grid, the all results will send back to the report portal where you can access in the, uh, the analytics of the execution and the partial analytics, like uh, the mobile view of the analytics will also send them into the Slack bot. So you can just read it from your Slack uh, messenger. That's how it looks. Cool, awesome. This looks, uh, this looks uh, really good. Exactly what I, was, uh, what I was hoping for. I think over here, we probably, at, at this point of the interview, usually these are like dedicated, you know, 45 minute hour long, long things. We won't do that, but this point might ask more questions or change up requirements and, and be able to, uh, to demonstrate it. Looks sure. really, looks really good. Jeff, you have any follow-up questions before feedback? Um, just two quick questions. Um, this, this framework that you're talking about, did you build it yourself or are you like a participant? You're talking about the, the, this framework or you're talking about the web driver I uh, this framework that, that you're describing, have you actually built all of this before or have you just been participating in it? Uh, we built it as a, as a comment. Uh, the, our comment is like a 50 engineers and uh -huh. uh, we worked all together, the whole team. Okay. Cool. And the second question um, I just have to ask, you know, your, your, your front end is Selenium is really strong. Obviously you showed us through it. How do you deal with flaky test? Um, just real quickly, especially because you have an offshore team that you manage. Obviously, you know, when you, when you code this, right, what happens if test fails um, and it's flaky? What, what, what are your common thoughts on fixing that or preventing it? Sure, first of all, if, so what we do to make sure that our flaky test is stable, um, we use the rerun um, implementation. So like if test fails for any reason, let's say um, the, the dropped connection or uh, the timeout or something like this. We will rerun the test automatically, uh, like after 50 seconds of the waiting. Uh, you know, this, the staging environment, they they not a hundred percent stable as a production environment. So that's how we we handle the flaky test. And like if we do two retries, and if after two retries the test is still continue fail, then uh, since we run this nightly, when we return back uh, to work in the morning we analyze the report portal where it was failed and uh, we fix it right away. So most of the time, uh, the test failed by two reasons. The, the most common reason is the product bug. So, you know, uh, the product bug is, I would say it is 80% uh, of, the, of the issues when the test is failed, not because of the automation bug. And 10%, uh, I would say that's the, the connection issue during the night, for example, the, the GCP cloud was not accessible or some, uh, some uh, Kubernetes node was died or something like this. And I would say another 10%, that's the issue with the automation when some, uh, let's say when some, the, when the front end uh, UI, UI uh, React components ID were changed and we didn't change it right on time because of some circumstances. So we will fix it right away and we will rerun the test again for make sure it is stable enough now. So that's how we handle the flaky test. Cool, thank you. Yep. I think we can start with the um, feedback. Rachel, do you wanna start? Yeah, sure, I can, I can go first. Um, See, uh, going back to the beginning, I thought your your introduction, your explanation, um, very passionate, very good. I really, I really appreciated that. Um, so you have you have a pretty good introduction that you have planned, um, and explaining what you're doing. Uh, one thing I would say, uh, I don't know if this is feedback you've gotten before from from your peers, other. Um, should, just just slow down a little. You talk very fast, and it's uh, you're very you know. Um, I think you're very clear to understand if you if you just um, so no issues, no concerns there, just you 
just keep in mind, sometimes you're speaking fast. So find, find different ways on how you can remind yourself to just slow down a little bit. When you slow down, you'll be, uh, you'll be much easier to understand. Um, okay. Not that it's a huge negative that, you know, because when you're talking fast, like that passion comes through, but then the interviewers may not be able to pick up everything. They're asking you to repeat things um, or, uh, you know, or, or, you know, um, they just don't understand what you're saying. So just keep that, I would say, definitely keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The other thing on your resume, you, you, you know, you were able to, exp you know, explain the, your, your architecture really well. And I don't know, again, how much experience you have in these specific things, but uh, at an automation engineer level, um, you know, the CI CD components of it are important. They're not specifically called out. You know, you've called out leverage knowledge of Docker and Kubernetes. So, um, but you haven't really, you know, you haven't really called out how you, how you used it uh, or uh, how you leveraged that. Um, and and specifically, like I don't know if you if you actually configured Jenkins or not, but you know, calling that out is is positive. Um, okay. I would say with just looking at your resume overall, you can probably condense some of your you know um, some of your other experience and then add add more items to your um, your most recent one, which will be like probably the most interest to uh, to other um, you know, you know for for people who are hiring. Um, so um, I would I would think about adding more things there and reducing uh, some of the other uh, you know some of your other previous experience that isn't super relevant to automation. Okay. And what else? Thank you I so thought, much. Yeah. Um, you know, just again reminder, you know, um, to ask questions. Uh, don't you know even if it's just to validate assumptions about a question that uh, an interviewer might have whether it's about system, whether it's about coding or, or anything in general, uh, ask questions. And I thought your answer to the, to the, to the flaky, flaky test was really good, really interesting. If we had more time, I'd probably dig into it. Um, I, I really, I really like that answer. Uh, but I, I, I have a feeling that uh, Jeff will get into it more. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, overall, I think you did, you did a really good. Uh, Thank really you so good. much. Really appreciate it for your feedback. It's always hard to go second. Uh, because you know they nailed a lot of things on the head. These these uh, mock interviews are hard because we only have a few minutes to kind of dive in. Um, but just in general, my my first impression of you is you you really understand what you're talking about, which is important, right? Um, you, you have a great grasp of what you're doing and why you're doing it, which is great. Um, the important thing though if you're looking for another job somewhere else is you understand why you're doing it, not you're doing it because someone else made you do it, right? This is the way of your company. So that's why you do it. Um, that's kind of why we ask you to draw your tech stack, right? Draw us a stack and show us how you would orchestrate testing across that stack. And then, you know, how would things change if, if my stack looks different or, you know, a deal stack looks different and how would mm -hmm. you approach that? So okay. that's, that's why, when you um when we're asking you to draw a stack m make sure you understand why we're asking you this question does that does that kind of make sense yeah absolutely what you, yeah what are we trying to get from you and why we're we getting from you so remember that's that's number one number two i i 100 agree on everything about the resume um you have so much experience over you, you mentioned microservices you're you know, you, you know, you understand the queuing and your microservices are behind the rabbit and queue. So you're obviously, you know, sending messages that way, you know, um, your orchestration from Kubernetes, Docker, Slack. Um, talk about that, right? In sections, like why, like how, what did you incorporate? How does that orchestration come, right? When does it run, right? Um, what was your involvement in it, right? Okay. Um, that's, that should be at least like, you know, double the size you have here. Because I want to understand if I hire you, how are you, you know, going to manage these things, right? Um, okay. But yeah, besides that, I, I definitely felt like you have a great, great um, grasp of, you know, at least front-end automation. We didn't really get a chance to dive into performance or, you know, back-end. But um, yeah, great job overall. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it for your feedback. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you, candidate number one. Uh, congrats for being one, number one. <laughs> uh, let's move with the candidate number two. Um, again, 
for those who want to participate in our future mock interviews, you have to do just only three steps. First, you need to, I mean, all this, these steps are written in our Meetup page. Just, just go to the Meetup page that Ira has posted. You have to go to the uh, Google form, apply through the Google form, then uh, join to our Slack channel and to participate in one of our uh, onboarding sessions that uh, Irina is hosting every other Saturdays. All right, uh, candidate number two, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, are you ready for uh, to start? Yes, um, could you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you well. Uh, okay, great, let's uh, get started. Candidate number two, please tell us a, a little bit about yourself and about your last uh, project. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Sure. No worries. Just want to find out if you can see my screen okay. Yeah, yeah we can okay. see. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, hi, everyone. Um, I just want to thank you all um, for your time on a Saturday. Um, I'm a candidate. I'm candidate to um, from a boot camp. So, I'm a um, fairly sort of recent graduate from boot camp in software testing. Um, prior to that, I was in education. Um, I was teaching science at a high school and also did some team, um, team lead position in biology. Um, and, you know, I really enjoyed what I was doing, um, but it came to a point, I would say in my career that I felt I wanted a fresh challenge um, where I can actually grow um, personally as well as professionally. And um, so I started to look for um, a career change um, and it had to be outside my comfort zone. So I did look into different sort of sectors um, and I do have family and friends in this industry where I was able to sort of seek some advice um, and also do some research on my own. And um, so I wanted to sort of hit the ground running and I signed up for a boot camp. Um, and it wasn't easy to forgive me because I have no background in sort of IT. Um, it was very intense, um, but really got me sort of hooked in. Um, through this course, I've learned sort of various tools, um, languages such as Java, Selenium, um, Cucumber API and SQL, um, as, as well as frameworks like BDD, TDD and hybrid using page object model. Um, I was also exposed to various methodologies such as Agile and Waterfall, um, in particular the Scrum framework and, um, and how important that was in the whole sort of software development life cycle. So, that's a little bit about myself, and then I can move on to project. Hope I'm not talking too fast. <laughs> okay, perfect. So a little bit about my project. Um, my project um, was on an internal management system, and it had and um, sort of it handled different aspects of HR. Um, there were two main users: uh, users admin as well as employee. Um, I worked on different modules of this application. Some of the modules included. PIM, personal information management. Um, there was also leave and time management, um, system admin, user role. So what I did as a automation engineer was to sort of develop um, and maintain test automation, um, clearly sort of understanding the requirements and also creating test case as well as test scripts on the code standards and acceptance criteria. Um, I performed UI testing with Selenium um, using a hybrid framework. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, it was a POM using Page Factory and BDD. Um, I used sort of Maven as a build tool to manage my directory um, plugins like Cucumber Reports, um, and also use Cucumber to automate my test cases in BDD format. And that was very helpful because it was in a sort of readable language where it made collaboration sort of easy um, and easy for the sort of group to understand. Um, I also performed some backend testing and really enjoyed doing API testing. So I did some sort of manual API testing using Postman. Um, and just to give you an example, for example, I sent a request like create. So I created an employee as an admin user. And then I did sort of validation in terms of response code, whether 201 was created. Um, I did validation in the response body as well as the headers. Um, I also did some automation with REST Assured um, with API, and I was exposed to some sort of SQL um, using my SQL and also JDBC for automation. So I feel that I have um, the sort of foundation um, and I feel very confident and very hungry, and I'm just sort of waiting for my sort of next journey. 
All right, thank you very much. Who wanna be first? Jeff, maybe you wanna start this time? All right, I can do this. Well, thank you, Canada too. That was very, very thorough. Um, awesome. Uh, let's talk about, um, you mentioned you implemented your test automation in a CI CD pipeline. Walk me through what that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so in Jenkins, we have um, settings, you know, configuration where we can sort of set, um, you know, attach the GitHub link, which has um, the, the actual code for my um, test scripts. And every time there's a change, there's settings in the Jenkins. I think it was, um, I don't remember the SCC, SCO, something like that, <laughs> where we can actually write down, you know, we, we, we write the GitHub settings and then we also decide how often we want to run, say, the smoke test. So if there was any changes in the GitHub, then it reflected on Jenkins. Um, and then we also, I had Cucumber reports, which was configured in Jenkins, and that was generated after each sort of build. Cool. So when, so, whenever your develop, your developer builds kicked off, did they, mm -hmm. did they tie into your test to kick off or what was the, what was the hook? Oh, okay. So we didn't have that sort of, um, you know, the, the sort of full CI CD. So we weren't testing the application after the developers deployed it. It was more of, it was a sort of application that was already built. Mm -hmm. And so we just learned how a CI CD will sort of, you know, how, how it would work. But I think in reality, you know, when the developers deploy it to your environment, that should reflect on the whole CI CD pipeline. I was just exposed to how I can, set my configuration in Jenkins to run my daily sort of smoke tests okay. um, and how I can how that can generate reports so I can you know check the reports when there was changes in the GitHub. Okay. Thank you. But it, yeah. So it wasn't a it wasn't like a develop and it was already made application. That makes sense. Awesome. Um, can you um, can you tell me why you picked um, Java instead of um, some 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 other language to start out with. What do you what do you like about what Java. do you like about <laughs> Java? Sure, it was to be honest. It, the course was standard, so we didn't have a choice. Um, mm -hmm. It was you know it, it came. Um, you know, it, I think it's a very popular language, um, yeah. and I like you know having sort of looked into it. Um, I think it's especially with the Oops concept. It, it, there's a lot of cl clarity and. Um, you know, you can use it, it's, it's widely used. And I think it's a very sort of strong language as a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't a choice. It was something that was part of the actual sort of bootcamp course. Yeah. So now that you've, you know, you've had, had a chance to use it in the bootcamp, what, mm -hmm. what do you like about Java? Now you mentioned a little bit like the community, but what are, what are some things that you mm -hmm. think make it a good tool for, uh, for you? Sure. I think, um, you know, various sort of um, frameworks support Java. I think it goes really well, especially with Selenium. So mm -hmm. using it on the UI end, um, I was able to um, sort of use the collections um, in the framework itself. Um, it, I was able to use many overloaded sort of methods, which was part of Java and that en enabled sort of, you know, me and my team to, um, you know, it just prevented that code redundancy. So we can just call up on um, those methods overloaded methods um, in our common methods. And, and that just was so much easier. It just made the framework, uh, you know, it gave more clarity. And I would say, you know, it, it was better in that respect. So it provides a lot of, um, you know, inher even inheritance itself. When, we, when, when I have, you know, going back to my framework, I have um, my base class, which I extend. Uh, I have a page in initializer, so I'm able to use Oops concept uh, rigorously in the framework and I just think it just makes the whole system the process very easy to understand and and, and clean. Nice um, I see that you've highlighted test ng and JUnit in your uh -huh. uh, your technical skills did you write unit test cases uh, for your for your test code as well? Oh no no unit test cases so I think that's done by the devs but test ng was um, you know we had an exposure where um, just prior to starting the Cucumber sort of framework, test engine was introduced. And, and that was qu quite good because we were able to um, do sort of data-driven testing. And I liked um, assertions that wasn't available, say on JUnit, which was, which was there in the test NG. Um, so I know how the test NG framework works, which is more sort of on the um, sort of data-driven side. Um, and then it has its own reports, which was very useful. Um, but I did know sort of unit testing though. A JUnit is something that I use mm -hmm. when I'm sort of doing my validations. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would say assert that or, you know, assert if I have two, um, you know, Boolean values, I will sort of compare if I have a string expected versus string actual. So the string expected will be from the requirements and actual will be what I'm retrieving from, say, automating my UI. And then that enabled me to do sort of verification, validations in that sort of respect. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Cool, um, I, I love how you talk a lot about your API. Um, it's great that you took leadership over a group of five students. Mm-hmm. Um, I just have a few questions about that. Sure. Uh, for your you know, testing um, projects, what kind of auth did, you, did your product use and how did you test that? Mm-hmm. So the authorization we used was um, J- JSON Web Token. Um, so I, I, I would say it wasn't sort of building the framework from start. There was a framework, but it was how we can, you know, um, maintain, how we can sort of, you know, build upon that sort of framework. So we had um, the JSON Web sort of token was a, a, a part, one of the class that we decided would be to generate the JSON token so that if we were to request that in our um, at one of the calls that it was readily available. We don't need to write, keep on writing, you know, bearer, JSON, bearer mm-hmm. and the token repeatedly. So um, in, in the Postman manually, um, it was set up as a global variable. So um, from memory, <laughs> I would say, you know, I would set up as a global variable and then unset it. I think it was in the prerequisite, you know, the pre sort of steps so that it generated that token dynamically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, that saves a lot of time. Um, and that also reflected, in, you know, in the framework, we, um, as a team, sort of, we looked into how we can have constants with the endpoints so that we don't need to keep on writing the endpoints. We can just call the endpoint or even say um, a payload, you know, we can have the payload and call that method when we are making our sort of requests for a post or other sort of requests. When when you used when, did you decide to use draw tokens for your um, project or was that just what was provided for you? No, th- that's all sort of provided. Um, okay. In terms of like a decision, you know what sort of decision I may have made in the course. Um, uh-huh. You know, it's 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 one of those sort of I don't know. I'm sure you're um, sort of aware of bootcamp. A lot of the structures done, all the sort of modules that need to be taught, it's already delivered in the way it's been done. And um, we do have some sort of flexibility. But one thing that I did take on um, which I felt we didn't have too much exposure was, you know, what, what would it look like if we go, if we were to go into an industry, you know, what does a daily stand up, um, mm-hmm. a retro demo look like? So that's something that I took on. Um, I took on that leadership and I said to my group, okay, I'm going to set up daily stand ups at 12 and everyone was available. We'll do our sprint planning on, you know, every two weeks, we'll have our retro demos and um, just creating sort of user stories on Jira. And I felt that, was a great learning curve for me because you know writing those the requirements it's not easy <laughs> so yeah. I do appreciate how clear it needs to be um, mm. and also um, initially I wrote those requirements in Gherkin steps but slowly I then um, sort of enabled my group to take on that responsibility so I just gave them the requirement I said okay you need to come up with the steps to test this. Okay so kind of Going back to what you mentioned that, you know, like you're looking at other industry standards besides JOT, what other industry standards for off token? I mean, off could you do for API? Do you, um, you do it? Sure. We, we didn't do any. That's the only one that we did. But I, I'm aware that there is like off um, 2.0, I think it was okay. framework, which, mm-hmm. um, which is a sort of framework. I would say it's great for developers. It gives them a lot of flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that sort of um tokenization um, it, that sort of I would say authorization would be when you're first you're sending a request to get a access grant key and with mm-hmm. that access grant key you send another request to get a token and then once you've got that token then you can um, you know hopefully have access to a um, data storage so just to give you an example if there was a um, my wallet application where I have, um, you know, I'm making purchases using my, my wallet application. And initially I will have a prompt to say, you know, I, am I the user? Do I give permission for my wallet to send the request to get a grant access key, if that makes sense. And then with that access key, then there's a, another request sent to get a token. And then with that token, you then retrieve, it, it then has access to my accounts like Chase Bank or any other accounts. Okay. Sorry, you know, I mean, um, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. 
That's good. No, that's that's really, really detailed. Um, I love your examples, by the way. Uh, last question. So part of API testing, you mentioned mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, obviously, I think you said rest assured here, which is, you mm-hmm. know, the Java library, and you also use Postman. If yeah. I wanted you to test something very simply, like, uh, hey, I'm a developer, can you just validate that this post or this get works? Mm-hmm. Besides using Postman, or besides using, you know, well, obviously, you're writing something in rest assured, how would you execute a simple, you know, get? Get request. Um, yeah. I would say, you know, um, firstly, there'll have to be some sort of documentation for me to perform any sort of testing. Yeah, let's say I, I can give it to you. I, I tell you the exact mm-hmm. endpoint. Mm-hmm. And I might tell you there's no off. It's just, you know, just okay. get your slash <coughs> my name, okay. right? How would you run it to get the payback? Um, I would, I, I'm, I'm assuming if I pass that you are, you are right. Um, and, you know, if I pass the query, I'm assuming if I did some sort of query parameter, um, on the sort of web, I might be able to retrieve what I want. So if I wanted an employee, um, then I can, you know, use a sort of query parameter and write the employee ID and then retrieve it. So where, but where I would, would also do it? manual tests. Sorry, I, I, I'm just curious. How, how would you like? How would you sh- like? Say I want you. Just, I don't worry about the parameters or anything. I'll give okay. everything to you. But how would you like get me the payload back? Like, what would you do to get it? Um, okay, if you just um, break down the question again, maybe I don't understand the question. Sorry, it's okay. my fault. Yeah. So let's say I give you, I, I just want you to run on simple get. I give you mm-hmm. the exact parameter, the exact UI, whatever. Besides using Postman or running it through a script, how would you simply just go and get the payload back? Um, I mean, I would check the UI um, or the database. I mean... So, I mean, like, would you, is there a way to... <coughs> You do a to do, do run this um, command through a command line or through a browser. Like if I just want you to do a simple, you know, grab something for me. Mm-hmm. I, I've never done it to be honest, so I'm not too sure how I would do that. Okay, cool. Okay, I think I we, have a, we, we have a time for a few more questions. Me? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me. So. Um, so Jeff, yeah. so, I'm, I'm so sorry. When when you mentioned about, uh, you know, did you say apart from Postman and apart from Rest Assured? That's great, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the only tools I've used. So yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'll just just a little bit of like uh, in in process, you know, kind of like immediate feedback would be like if if you know if, if you don't know about a about a tool or if you're not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, how you can pivot that during an interview is show curiosity okay. to your interviewer about okay. like, hey, I don't, you know, be honest. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, those are the only two tools I've ever used for, uh, mm-hmm. for API testing, but then you can pivot it into, um, you know, you know, what, what, what are some of the other options, Jeff? Can you, can you share that, you know, you, to show sometimes to show that curiosity, um, mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, is, is, is better than, than leaving it. Cause I'm, I'm guessing you're probably curious too, like what the answer is. Yes, I mean, I'm still going through my mind and I just thought about, um, you know, when you do an inspection on a web sort of page and there's like a net, I think if you select net, network, sorry, <clears throat> there's usually response codes there. Absolutely. That's one yeah. way. You can also, um, have you ever used a curl command in um, your, um, uh, what's it called? Terminal? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So one one thing is if you use Postman, there is actually an option to retrieve your 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 get or post whatever. It shows you like you can either script it or through a curl command. It'll it'll translate it for you. Oh, right. excellent. Okay, I will definitely look into that. That sounds interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're curious about something, you know, don't don't leave it on a on a cliffhanger because you know mm-hmm. the interviewer might have a lot more questions to ask. Feel free to you know show interest, your curiosity, and and just ask them about it, and uh, that's going to be a much better experience for them, and and also uh, for you. You'll you know that's one way to maintain your confidence throughout the interview. If you mm-hmm. leave it like that, and you're still thinking about a question, that might impact the you know rest of your uh, the rest of your answers. Interview. Sure, thank you. Yeah, um, since we have a couple of minutes, I wanted to ask you uh, this question. So this is you know this is this is supposed to be this question that I'm going to ask is supposed to be like, um, you know, what's the word like a softball question, okay. but it, it also uh, communicates to me how clearly you understand something. So, mm-hmm. so can you explain to me how Selenium web, web driver works? Like I'm a five-year-old. 
Okay, okay. So um, Selenium Web Driver, I would say it's um, it's a driver which will directly communicate with a browser. So a browser could be a you know Chrome, it could be sort of Firefox. So in Selenium, we have um, a web driver, and we use a special word for that called a sort of interface. And um, so that web driver, um, what it does is it communicates. It will talk to the driver. It would say, "Hey, Chrome driver." could you go to this Google website? So it will go to the Google website. And then it might say, hey, um, so driver might say, um, so web driver will say, um, driver get, so driver.get will be, um, it's asking the browser to go to a specific URL page. And it might say driver.navigate.back, as in come back to your previous page. So it's, it's a way of communicating with the browser in its simplest terms. <laughs> okay. Okay, and how does you know where does where does your code come into come into play with the, mm -hmm. between it, the web driver and browser? What what does the, that look like? Okay, so what I will do is first I will need to um, call the system class. So I will say system dot set, and I'll need to decide on what sort of driver I want to use. So I would say you know system dot set, and I'll say web driver dot you know um, Chrome driver, and then I will specify my path, and then I will also put the extension like Chrome driver exe. And then from there, I will create an instance of the web driver interface. So I'll say web driver driver um, equals new Chrome driver. And now that I've created an object, um, I will then use that driver to access various sort of methods, which is accessible from that um, web driver interface. So I will write my code in my step definition. If it was, if you were to ask where in the framework, I would use Selenium. So it will be in my, um, so I'll write my Gherkin steps in my feature file. And then my actual Selenium with Java, I will write it in my sort of step definitions. And that's a very that, that's a good you know explanation, but it's it's too low level. Like, can you okay? What, what is it? Can you can you can you can you share that explanation in non technical terms with me? What is the relationship between your code, web driver, and the browser? Um, so I would say web driver is I would say it's, it's going to be. Um, the person that's sending the message from me, from my code to the mm. browser, which is Chrome. So web driver is going to be like an API. It's going to say, I will deliver whatever message you want to the, um, to the browser. And then I will get that message back and I'll deliver it back to you. So I write the code and the driver then sends, you know, takes that code, communicates with the browser and in mm. turn browse, and then it will, you know, interact with the browser and it will give me that sort of response back. Okay, uh, one one more follow up question to that is, you know, what you know for front end testing, what kind uh -huh. of browsers have you tested? Have you tested with? Yeah, so for sort of front end, we'll be just Internet Explorer um, as well as you know Chrome, and um, I do have a sort of um, in my base class where I can alternate between the browsers. So um, there was a method where I can switch between the two browsers. And then that browser configuration would be in my config file properties. Okay, and this is it, the it's okay if if this is something you don't have experience mm -hmm. with. But um, did during this bootcamp did you also uh, have an opportunity? So this is this sounds like this all ran in your in your in your local, uh -huh. um, basically in your in your desktop. Did you have a chance to run your uh, your Selenium tests? Um, you know, in, in the cloud or um, mm -hmm. just outside of your um, local. Did you have an opportunity to do that? No, no I haven't. I mean, I'd love to, especially mobile testing um, and also, you know, yeah. AWS interacting with all those buckets. You know, that would be great, but I haven't had exposure on that. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, I, coming in for an entry position, it's okay not to have mm -hmm. that. I was, I was just curious. Okay. okay. Thank you. Do I have chance last one last quick question sure okay um so i love to ask this one this is my favorite okay. mm -hmm. you're you know you talked a bit about front-end testing how do you deal with um do you ever have to deal with flaky test meaning that you made some testing some elements and all of a sudden it passed and next time you run developer made a change and it broke mm -hmm. okay um so for that we i haven't sort of had that much exposure on that. I haven't had a lot of experience on that, but I know that with the page object model, 
um, it's a great sort of design pattern where if there was any changes to say a web element, then you can easily change it in that pages. And so that gives a lot of, I guess, flexibility for these flaky, it's the first time I'm hearing the term, but it's, no, you did mention it to the previous candidate, but the flaky sort of test. Um, I would say if you can, it, it's about maintaining that framework. So, you know, we can write the code, but that maintenance should accommodate any sort of changes um, from the development side or any other sort of aspect. Um, I think they, sh they should incorporate that. So if that comes into the whole design of the framework and maintenance. And I think that's fundamental. Cool. All right, guys. If you don't have any other questions, let's maybe move with the feedback. Um, Shall I stop sharing? Okay. Yeah, you can stop sharing the screen. Thank you. Um, Jeff, you want to start with the feedback? Absolutely. I would love to. Um, I really enjoyed um, your examples. I felt like you had a great grasp of why you're doing things. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're a little bit nervous, which yeah. you know I would be too if I was we flipped the situation. But um, the one thing about your examples is make sure that once you're good, don't don't keep going because okay. you might talk yourself into a point where I'm I might be like I don't now I don't know where you're going right. Mm -hmm. um, I think your your for example your off question um, I was very impressed that you. A lot of boot campers, they only study what they were taught and they don't care about anything else. And mm -hmm. the problem with that is um, what you're going to learn when you get out into the real world is almost no one uses that same system. Um, yeah. Principles will apply, but, you know, like, for example, we don't use JAW, right? Uh, I think only one company I've ever worked for used JAW tokens, right? Um, but it's good that you actually knew, like, hey, I could tell you about different token. Mm -hmm. But at that point, you're good, right? You don't need to kind of go anymore. And mm -hmm. I feel kind of like you, you kind of talked yourself into a point where I was not sure why, why you were telling me about that. Okay. Um, besides that, um, I think, you know, your, your resume does look pretty strong. Um, yeah. Um, just, I guess the thing is, you know, keep, keep doing, keep asking questions, I would say, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you're taught one way. Um, my example for the API testing, right? You, you rest assured and you post me that's good, but how else can you test APIs? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do ask you about, you know, like front end testing. You've done a lot of local testing, right? But mm -hmm. in the real world, obviously no one just tests locally, right? So how does, how do people in the real world do it? Do they call out to browser stack? Do they call out mm -hmm. to, you know, sauce labs? What are those tools, right? What, what, how do other companies kind of do things? And if you kind of look online, you'll see a lot of people telling you like, this is how we orchestrate things. And this is why we orchestrate things. Having that in your pocket will really set you aside from other boot campers because it's not just, Oh yeah, this is what you're taught. Okay, well we 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 know this, but mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about like leverage. You know, I'm thinking about how how I can scale, and that's really um, important, right? That, that sets you aside from the other candidates. Sure, thank you. Okay, awesome. I'll second what a lot of stuff that Jeff said for uh, for sure. I. Um, I'm not sure who, who your bootcamp is and, you know, keep that to your, you know, <laughs> you don't, you don't need mm -hmm. to share that, but, um, I would have to say like, this has been like one of the like most, uh, what's the right word? Pleasant, uh, time talking to somebody who's just out, out of a bootcamp, whether they did a good job or as Jeff mentioned, it's your curiosity that's, that's taking you to the next level. Uh, you did a really good job of talking through some really, uh, tough questions. And um, so you're, you know, like I, you know, you mentioned that that was, you know, you took a plunge uh, in, in doing this. I think you did an excellent job uh, taking this plunge. Um, it's just a matter of finding your, your first job and, and you'll do, you'll do really, really well. Cause these were some really tough questions and uh, you did overall, you did a really, really good job. I think I gave some, some feedback in the middle around, mm -hmm. um, you know, curiosity, if you don't, if, if you're not, if you don't know something, but I, aside from that, I think in general, you did a really good job of, uh, of redirecting questions to, to something that, uh, to, to take those questions and matching it with your experience, uh, specifically around unit testing. When I asked that, um, it could have gone any way you, 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 you kind of, to, to, to take Jeff's word, you understand, you understood a little bit about why I was asking the question and, mm -hmm. 
uh, took it in a, in a direction that was really helpful uh, to like highlight your, uh, your experience and understanding of, of those concepts. So, uh, so keep it up. Awesome. Um, Thank you. And again, this, uh, this, this, you didn't have a GitHub profile in your, in your resume that could have been just for this uh, because, you know, it's an anonymous, um, mm -hmm. but if you, I, I would, if you don't have it, I would recommend, especially in an entry level, having a GitHub profile in your resume. So, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know that will that will put you ahead uh, from other uh, candidates who are vying for these these entry level uh, QA automation positions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, a little bit of a this might be a little bit of um, nitpicking, so mm -hmm. please don't take it as a negative. But a couple of things on your resume, like the unified communications, that's probably not uh, not important. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a slight typo you know, where you, uh, in your experience, where you cite uh, CICD pipeline, you know, add a slash or a space there. But okay. these are the kind of things that QA manager, nobody's going to hold it against you, sure, right? Nobody's, sure. <laughs> nobody's gonna hold it. I'm not going to hold it against you. Jeff is not going to hold it against you. But since mm -hmm. you're here, wanted to make sure that, um, um, that, that I share that with you. And uh, I thought your, your introduction, you know, when you're introducing yourself, it's that story you're telling. Uh, your mm -hmm. story was very, um, very engaging, uh, very passionately told. Uh, so, uh, so really good job on your uh, your introduction uh, as well when you first started. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. I laugh because I, I circled the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's expected. I mean, I'm I'm glad um, that you know you guys raised it because there are sort of you know pinpoints that we should be, as you said, for a QA tester. That's fundamental. All right, thank you very much, candidate number two. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can drop the call. And Jeff, Adil, let's let's do um, post analysis. Like uh, we had uh, candidate number one and candidate number two, and uh, not necessarily that you have opening right now or in the near future. But what would you say? Would you go? with them both if you would have uh, the positions or you wouldn't go. And uh, let's talk about why. What was, you know, when we give the feedback directly to the candidate, it's one, it's one thing, but uh, when we can reiterate between us, that's another thing, right? So what do you guys uh, think about and candidate number two. Oh, can... I'm sorry, I can't. I tried to. So do I just leave because? Uh, let me. Let I me think out. Irina needs to because I left and then. It... No, that's that that that. Yeah, Irina made it. Um, you yeah. want me third, or I can, or do yeah. you want? What do what do you guys sure. think? So, um, for candidate one, if if I was hiring an automation engineer, um, straight up, yeah, like obviously you can do the job, you know, obviously, you know, the questions would be more of uh, culture fit, you know, rather than technical fit. I think he's strong enough there. Um, the, the, the question though, I would have for candidate one would be, you know, is he applying for a senior position, not, not a junior, right? And then what I'm looking here is, I think the look would be, hey, maybe he's ready for a senior position, right? In that case, what I'm looking for more is, you know, like how I can drive forward your framework rather than how I'm participating in your framework. So that would change some of the questions that we're looking for. So the question for them is, you know, for a junior engineer position or automation engineer position is fine. I would definitely hire, right? But for a senior position, what I'd be looking for would be a little different. Like, can you lead me into why we should be doing this? Can you tell me, you know, how you would solve this problem rather than how you implemented it? For candidate two as a junior position, absolutely, I would hire. Um, you know, great, um, you know, great, Great question out of great personality, great culture fit. I think it'd be she's really strong, right? Uh, I really enjoyed that conversation. So, yeah, I, what I also mentioned about candidate number two, uh, even she was nervous, but he, oh, I'm sorry, she she was handling this pretty well. You know, she wasn't stuck. She was uh, trying to playing around, though. Uh, yeah, get a water candidate number two. You know, I always keeping uh, water nearby when I do, uh, when I go through the interview by myself or when I'm interviewing, it's, you know, staying uh, hydrated. It's always a, a key to keep your, uh, to be cool. <laughs> Adil, what do you think? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll second what what Jeff said. So walking through, like looking at candidate one, I think they, they did an excellent job. I think that would be the question at what what level was I looking to hire uh, would be, you know, uh, some things might change there. Obviously for candidate one and two, uh, there would be, you know, um, this is something we obviously didn't cover and we wouldn't cover, but, you know, uh, the, the coding side of it has to be good, but every, but what, what from what I saw, they 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 look um, uh, they look ready. If, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if if they have their resume out there that they're actively uh, interviewing. Uh, I would say, just like anything else, interviewing is a skill. So um, you know, to 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 do this here, to you know, to have that self awareness just shows you know how far uh, you can go. Um, um, so yeah, definitely candidate one, thumbs up. Uh, candidate two as well, uh, thumbs up. I, you know, like this, uh, like I mentioned, don't, don't, you know, sometimes with, and this is nothing against boot camps per se. Uh, this is more about, you know, taking ownership of your career. Sometimes, um, a lot of times speaking to people from boot camps, um, you know, they, they only know what they were taught. And, and that kind of, um, uh, you know, the answer seems, you know, that's tough, but candidate two just knocked it out of the park. I mean, just did perfect job, whether it was them prepping them or uh, they're already good with, you know, interviewing, they did, they did an excellent job. And I'm sure some of these concepts that, that they dove into, they've, they've only run about, learned about it recently. So I, you know, I think if I had a, an entry level position definitely would be uh, would be a higher. Um, you know, I think we asked some even tougher questions that we, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be asked to be uh, to know the answer. And part uh, the other part of it, just a reminder for everybody, is you sh it's okay not to know things. Uh, I I can go on an interview. Jeff can I go on an interview and say, oh, I don't know about that, and still get you know still get the job. That applies not just to us. That that applies to um, to everybody here. So don't don't let that you know, don't let that get, you know, uh, to uh, get you down. Can I add one last thing I forgot to mention? So sure. um, for both candidates, if you're actually looking for a job, candidate one, your resume is, your, your performance today and your skills way better than your resume. That will kill you, right? Your resume needs to be better because you're better. Um, if, if I was to look at someone else's resume versus yours, you probably run circles around them in an interview, but you may not even get to the door because your, your experience level on your resume isn't strong enough to, to get you through. So if you can fix that, you're going to kill it inside. For candidate two, um, just talking to you today, your connections, meeting people in the industry, getting like reaching out through LinkedIn, getting to know hiring managers, going to events like these and going to events like conferences and talking to them will get you a lake in. Because once they know who you are, how you think, and like your personality, they're going to be like, I want to hire this person. So next time I have an opening, I'm going to get you in. Or for example, if I, you know, I met you in like conference, I'd be like, wow, this candidate is strong. I know a friend that's hiring. Let me get you in. Right. That's, that's the, because it's very hard. We get like 900 of these a, a, a day, a lot of them boot camps. And some boot campers are terrible. Like I think a deal hit it on the head. Like I was surprised that you're a boot camper. This is really strong. Right. So that's kind of my strategy for you too. If you are looking, how you should move forward. Actually, Jeff, you brought up really good point about the resume because what I mentioned, and by the way, guys, Jeff, Adil, are you guys hiring? This is my going to be another question. Or are you planning to hire in the near future? I, I, am, I am hiring. Um, so I am hiring for uh, QA engineers right now and uh, an SDET. Uh, pretty soon. It's not open yet. So I am hiring. Cool. Just uh, Jeff, how about you? Yeah, we are. Um, so I actually just started the program at Iterable. So we hired our first engineer, but every quarter we're, we're going to be scaling. So um, they'll constantly be hiring in the next few months. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, you know, just uh, pitching. If you guys, uh, whoever is watching right now or will be watching, uh, just check them out. Uh, check uh, uh, Jeff and Adil, uh, LinkedIn profile, their company, and uh, you can apply. But uh, why I'm asking, um, what I mentioned from like for the last couple months, I was uh, going through interview every day 
uh, I was interviewing people for uh, also, I, I do recruiting as you guys know. And what I mentioned, many, uh, this is also a very common mistake for experienced guys. Uh, they trying to bring their re universal resume. So let's say QA automation and for everything, you know, but uh, let's say a candidate number one, he, I also had feeling that he is targeting for not junior uh, QA or like not uh, mid QA, but more like a senior QA, right? QA automation. So, and his resume was like all, all over the place, uh, right? But in this case, uh, guys, you need to focus your resume and specific positions that you want to apply and make it distinguished from universal uh, uh, resumes, right? At the same time, like for software engineers, uh, we have front end, back end, you know, and uh, different frameworks. And especially like uh, boot campers also, they're trying to get with one resume, they're applying to <laughs> any other jobs, to everything. And this is just, uh, I would say it's a waste of time uh, because as a hiring manager, they're looking for specific role, specific candidate, right? So narrow down your job search. Uh, for candidate number two, what I would also suggest in terms of once you finish your bootcamp. And uh, also this is from my uh, past experience. Uh, I saw bootcampers who uh, finished their, who graduate like a year ago. What did they do between this year gap? N uh, nothing, you know, but it didn't really help. Within a year you could get an experience you know, by participating or uh, taking a part in any open source project. Uh, this is an advice and this is how you can get actually the experience, the skills. I know that uh, to getting the first job, it's always a hustle. It's always the hardest part. I, I mean, in the career, it's the hardest part in the career, but uh, you need to try. And this, this advice will be to all boot campers, right? Don't just expect, okay, I graduate and everybody is waiting. No, uh, we have a lot of graduates who has the same background, same resume, same <laughs> technical skills, and you need to be distinguished, right? And uh, I think this is the only way. Adil, Jeff, you wanna add something else? Yeah, I thought, I thought last point is really awesome. Uh, you know, for some people who are especially looking for their first job in, in QA automation or QA engineering in general, uh, you have to have a growth mindset coming into engineering. You'll be always learning. Me and Jeff are always, you know, uh, we're you know whether it's our free time or, or training that we can get through our work, whatever it's case, we're always, always learning. I've been doing this for over a decade. And so that never changes. And you have to show the same thing. If, if there is a gap in your resume, uh, that's okay. Um, there's a gap between your uh, boot camp and and your interview. That's okay. But what uh, what Ragani said, you have to be focused on on learning. You have to be talk about uh, what your uh, you know what you've been doing in between to grow your skills. You know, for somebody like I, I interview a lot of people. Like they'll say, oh yeah, I'm interested in API, and you know I haven't you know I haven't I haven't had a job in the past six months. What have you, I'll 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 give them the benefit of doubt. What have you done recently? When, when they say that they haven't, like, you know, that, that, also, that also tells me uh, if, if, I, if I hire them and they have to learn certain skills, like how, how, how self-motivated they are. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, and we also have questions in the chat. Uh, let's take a look. There's a... Um... I think Marlon asked, what tips could you give to foreigners who aren't fluent in English? Um, he feels prepared by technical perspective, but not by communicative perspective. So this one's a hard one, right? Because QA shine not just because they're amazing technical engineers, but because they have to be cross-functional, communicative with different departments and be able to convey and drive um, initiatives. Um, in this sense, you know, if you, if you don't feel very confident in your speaking, 
Um, obviously there's tips on like how to present, you know, slow down, you know, you know, be very clear, but I would also say how, your written ability, right? Do you, can you show off like your blogs? Can you show off your technical documents? Can you show off your readmes that are very, very like strong and, you know, like, can you prove you through other means that you can communicate, you can drive, you know, by you that way. Right. Um, if you have that like portfolio, a lot of times, you know, if I can pre-read on you and say, okay, I, I understand how you think, I understand why you're thinking. And then when we talk in person, you can, you know, you're able to drive, you know, a little bit better, more confidence there. Um, that's sometimes more than enough than, you know, just, just chatting. Yeah, I can, I can say because I'm a foreigner. <laughs> English is my second language, obviously, but um, there is nothing can help except the practicing, you know, you cannot, <laughs> learn through doing nothing. You can't just practice it. If you don't have a, a, any uh, anybody with whom you can practice it, practice with yourself, practice with the camera. You know, I uh, previously before, when I actually was looking for my first job, the only, uh, I was, <laughs> I was driving Uber or I don't remember, Lyft. And during my breaks, I was, uh, I had the, my first iPhone with a camera and I just record myself and was, obviously it was terrible, but hey, we all do the first steps. So if you feel unconfident about talking and you know, my English is not still perfect, but whatever you can do is just practicing. And that's the only way, that's the only way. Um, and there is some comments like there should be a roadmap how to test certain types of applications and services. These questions usually go for uh, QA engineering, uh, like uh, manual positions. And we assume that you now know how to test in uh, test um, automation positions. However, actually, Jeff and Adil, I have a question for you because I also mentioned that a lot, especially boot campers who go into as that positions. So there's, I know there's some certain boot camps who preparing just for as that so what do you think about it like uh, are they skipping kind of the manual qa uh, let, let's say well my uh career path was a little bit different i started with a as a qa analyst at uh, one gaming company right and then i learned uh during the work my uh, uh automation skills uh, during the work right uh, but now I see a lot of boot campers who skipping this part. What 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 do you guys think? Is it is it still an option? Is it uh, is it valid? Would you consider? Um, I can go, I can go first. I think just the industry as a whole is huge. So you know if you are if you there there are companies that that don't have manual QA at all, right? And they they probably might look at that experience as a negative. I, hopefully not. Hopefully they're not holding that kind of experience as, as biased against candidates. But I think it's just really wide kind of industry. And if um, uh, if you don't have QA experience and you're going for SDET, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, I will say a lot of companies, uh, it is really important. You know, it could be still QA people driving what to automate. Right. And uh, or they may not need somebody to just automate, but they may need somebody to 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 look at to to look at requirements or look at screens and and write effective test cases. Um, so if 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 at some point in time, it will come up, whether you have QA experience or not, whether you can express your yourself concisely in the form of in the form of a test. Right. We talked we, we didn't talk about it today, but BDD is 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 a you know they might somebody might ask you to write, especially entry level they might ask you to write certain tests like hey i have a sample screen you know uh, write me so that skill is required this kind of expressing yourself expressing your coverage through 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 written communication specifically through test cases uh, will be will be required i mean we do bdd at uh, at at chow now and when we are doing pr reviews we'll give we'll give people feedback like, hey, that, that, you know, that test case doesn't make sense, or you're, you're doing 15 things in that, uh, in that, in that one test, you, you can't do that. So uh, at some point in time, it, it will come up. That's kind of my take on it. 
Yeah. Um, wow. The common problem I see with boot camp is that they sell this pitch that will get you ready for to be an estate. The problem that you know what you see when you get out into the market is there is every company is a little different, right? Every company has different needs and wants. But the biggest problem is that I feel that boot campers don't have is they don't understand why. Like, what are you testing? Why are you testing this? What is the point of an estate? Right. And a lot of new grads come in, they don't know. Right. Like I always, I have a lot of entry estates. I'm like, why did you write a test case for that? Like, what are you trying to do? Right. Wh wh what is your goal? Especially in SaaS companies that are small. Um, I, I've, I've done a lot of B's, C's, and D's, series B, C's, and D's, and they don't have a lot of resources. So you have to move fast. Right. The question isn't, can I test this? It's why are you testing this? What's the value? Where's the risk? How do I put together a program where I can make sure my customer is happy? Right. And my, my guess, my, my bottom line is the tooling you get from the SDET really will help you understand the concepts of how to go about testing, but you need to understand why you're, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? What value are you giving to your customers? How do you prove that value? How do you get other people to work together to drive this forward? And then how do I use the tech skills I got to implement this? Right. And I kind of feel like this, the QA analysts from before have this knowledge and they can up level to engineering easier. But then if you have the, the technical knowledge, but you don't have the like why, right? Then why not developers just do it, right? They can, you know, write, they can, you know, do some testing on the side, right? Why hire someone dedicated? Totally, totally agree. Uh, all right, guys. I, I think today's session was just great. We had uh, so many insights, especially the last part that you, Adil and Jeff covered. I think that was really awesome and very helpful to uh, people who is searching. Um, as I said, who is searching for their first job, it's the most stressful. <laughs> I think it, it was the most stressful part in my life. I, I, tell, I tell you straightforward. But uh, anyway, yeah, interviewing is hard. Uh, interviewing is just a skill, as I did, uh, mentioned. And I 100% agree. Interviewing is just a skill. It's another skill. Uh, it's another skill additional to your job skills, right? You just need to practice it, practice it. All right, guys, uh, thank you very much. And the next mock interview will be on March 13th. This is what we are planning. That's going to be for software engineers and software developers. Uh, as, a, as I said, graduates uh, from different boot camps are welcome, uh, or anyone will be welcoming. Um, yeah, and Adil and Jeff, I would be happy to see you also, all, like always, in the next mock interview session. Let's keep in touch and all have a great weekend, all right? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.